welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about nail hacks that hopefully you've never seen before, but there's 20 in here, so you've probably seen a couple, but I'm hoping that some of these are new. So my first nail hack is for people like me who have really crooked fingers. Look at that middle one, my god. Nobody wants to see me flip someone off with that thing. So my trick for this is to file your nails at the opposite angle at which they lean. So my finger leans more toward the right, so I file it more upward toward the left. It's not going to make your fingers straighter, but it's just going to give the illusion that your nails aren't as crooked. I'm sorry, that your fingers aren't as crooked as they actually are. I use this trick on many of my fingers because I'm very injury prone and have broken several of them. So I have a couple of crooked fingers and this helps just a little bit. Hack number two is for when you have dirty fingernails like this. Now we can wash our hands all day but some of the dirt still manages to stay in there. So for easy cleanup I just take some cotton and wrap it around a dotting tool and then dip it in a little bit of water and just clean underneath my fingernail this way. Q-tips usually don't fit because they're a little too big and using toothpicks doesn't work for me either because the toothpicks are so pointy that they just poke right through the cotton. So this way has worked the best for me. Oh my god, that's so gross. Um, anyway, this way has worked the best for me and you can just repeat it until your fingers are as clean as you want them to be. And the next hack is when you open your bottle and this happens. Now, no matter how expensive of a brand I'm using, this happens to me pretty often. So my trick for this is to just take some tweezers or your fingers, whatever you want, and pull the brush out like this and lay it wherever you want, and then just take a single dot of nail glue. Make sure you get it right in the center because if you get it on the ridges of the cap right there and then you close up your bottle, you're never gonna get that thing open ever again. So just make sure that you land it right in the center. You can apply it with a toothpick if that's gonna make things a little easier for you. But once you do that, just go ahead and take the tweezers and push it right back in there and give it about maybe 30 seconds to make sure that it's totally dry. Nail glue dries pretty fast, but just in case. And then just pop it back on and screw it on just to double check that it worked. And this worked. This works really well. I've used it a couple of different times and it's never failed me. Next hack is if you take out your brush and it's coming off just fine and then you start painting and all of a sudden you see a bristle come out like this. So my trick for this is to take some cuticle nippers and take them kind of along that one bristle. You want to make sure that you don't cut off any more because you don't want to take too many bristles off your brush and you want to make sure that you don't just cut the part that's sticking out because that'll make everything uneven. Just take the nippers and drag all the way to the end and just nip it right off. Now if you open your bottle and you get a brush that looks like this, um, you should just write a letter to the owner of the company and demand a refund because honestly, what, what is this? What is this? Anyway, moving along to the next hack. There are so many different uses for liquid latex nail art, water marbling, whatever, but you don't have to do nail art to use liquid latex or any kind of peel off base. You can use it just to paint dark colors. Now dark colors usually stain my skin no matter what kind of formula. Red and black and blues are so hard to take off sometimes. So I just use some liquid latex and if it gets on my skin, um, it's no big deal because you can just paint whatever color you want and then pull the liquid latex right off. And this is one of my favorite tricks and my friends make fun of me for this all the time because sometimes um, I forget to finish this hack. You'll see what I mean. So let's say you're painting your nails and this is nail number nine and you get some polish in there which is totally fine. I have this habit and I'm sure some of you do too of taking my thumbnail and cleaning it right up. It works really well for that index finger but then you look at your thumb that you just painted and it looks like this and you're kind of like oh yeah I probably shouldn't have done that. So my hack for this is to just paint your thumbs last because why do you have to paint them in order? Nobody said you have to paint your thumbs first or second or third or whatever so I just 
finished painting those top eight fingers and once I finish painting those I move on to my thumbs see this thumb is nice and clean if I need to clean up one of these other fingers and here is my for some reason really dry thumb but uh, painting thumbs is really hard on camera I don't know if you guys know this but anyway um, now your nails are all nice and clean and freshly painted and cute and pretty next hack is when you want to start a gradient and you look at your sponge and there's all this lint on it so the easiest thing in the world to do is to just take a piece of tape you can use scotch tape I don't know why I'm using this like industrial packing tape it was probably just the only one laying around but all you have to do is put it right on your sponge and lift it right up and all of that lint has transferred onto the tape and off of your sponge and you can just repeat it wherever you want this sponge happened to be very linty I know that's not a word but it had a lot of lint on it so there you go it works in like half a second and you have a super clean sponge for your gradients and now that you're ready to do your gradient this next hack is for when you want to achieve a dark gradient with little to no cleanup so my trick for this is to paint two coats of the lighter of the two colors and then apply your simply peel as you normally would do but when you go to paint your polish onto the sponge, instead of painting half of each color, paint about a third of that lighter color and then two thirds of whatever darker color you want to use. And the reason we're doing this is because when you go to roll the sponge onto your nails, you're not going to take that lighter color all the way down to the cuticle line. You're going to bring it about a quarter of the way up your nail. And doing this is going to keep that lighter color from getting onto your skin and this is going to leave you with little to no cleanup. This is just going to make life so much easier because I love the way dark gradients look but I am not ready to flood my nails with red polish, no thank you. But if you do then my favorite hack, well, one of my favorite hacks, is to take a small brush and to clean up those smile lines. So even if you don't have polish on your skin, you can use a brush to just get the cleanest lines possible. I get a lot of questions about how I make my lines look really nice and even. And most of the time I use a brush like this because in all honesty, we can't always just paint our nails super smooth and clean and have perfect lines every time. So using a brush is definitely going to be a real help. And once you're all done with your gradient, you can move on to this hack that you've probably already seen, but is a question I get a lot about whether or not you can clean your sponges. And the answer is no, because when nail polish dries, it gets really, really hard and nothing is going to clean it. So just take a pair of scissors and cut it right off. These sponges are also really inexpensive, so you're not really missing anything. <laughs> just cut it off and say goodbye. Moving on to vinyls. If you're a vinyl hoarder like me, then you probably have to look through them like this and you might kind of lose your mind because this is kind of annoying to have to look through. All you have to do is take a photo album and what you're probably thinking is, who does this photo album belong to? It looks like you stole it from a 10 year old girl. Um, I got it for Christmas when I was 10 years old, so that's probably why. Anyway, all you have to do is take your vinyls and put one sheet in each slip like this and you can just flip through them instead of having to sift through them every single time you want to do a design. Next for vinyls is to always put a top coat before you apply your vinyls. Now this step is the most important thing you're going to do when you apply vinyls. So I have two coats of the same color on these fingers and I apply top coat to the right and no top coat on the left. So I'm going to show you the difference. So I'm applying the vinyl and just painting a light coat of polish like I do. And I'm taking my tweezers and just taking it off immediately, which is my next hack. Remove nail vinyls immediately to get the cleanest lines possible. And now I'm applying a different vinyl to the middle finger that did not have the top coat. And I cannot get this thing off, you guys. I forgot how hard this was to do because I haven't made this mistake in a while. But this would look like I, I can't even take it off in one piece. Like this is ridiculous. This took so long to do. So see how it lifted the base polish? Look at the difference. Like you can just tell that applying a top coat makes a huge difference. 
Moving along to kind of a newer hack that I discovered. I was running low on my medium vinyls and then I looked at my skinny ones and I thought those are pretty much half the size of my medium ones. What if I just picked up two of them and applied them instead of a medium vinyl? Like would they look the same? And guess what? They do. So here I'm showing you a medium nail vinyl and two skinny ones. And you want to make sure that when you pick them up you keep them stuck together or else they're not going to maintain that same shape. But look, they're pretty much the exact same size and you cannot tell the difference. So hack number 15 is sort of a two-in-one. So first we're going to start by using vertical lines to make our nails look longer. This is perfect if you have maybe wider nail beds or just short nails. And this leads me to my next hack, which is to sponge polish instead of painting it over your vinyls. This is going to allow you to add thinner coats. It's going to help your polish apply more evenly. So you're going to get much cleaner lines and again, remove them immediately. This is also the perfect manicure for those of you who want to dress up as a referee for Halloween. My next hack is for when you paint red and white stripes or just any light and dark colors together. Instead of painting your top coat up and down, go ahead and paint it sideways so that you don't risk blending the colors together. Because there are few things that are more annoying than painting a top coat and then smudging the colors together, especially red over white. So go ahead and paint it sideways and then you can go ahead and wait for that to dry and paint it like you normally would. One of the other most annoying things when you paint your nails is painting a fresh color and getting up and bumping it. The easiest way to fix this is to just cover your mistakes with a glitter. I chose this one because it has those larger white glitters inside of it, so just go ahead and paint a coat and if it doesn't cover it the way you want it to, then do what I did here. I just took a dotting tool and removed one of the white glitters and placed it individually and it's like nothing ever happened. Another way to apply glitter is using a sponge. Now I do this for gradients, and I normally start by painting a coat of glitter first, but I forgot to do that here, so I just did it at the end. So you want to apply your glitter to the sponge so that it soaks up some of the clear coat that's in the polish, and that way you only apply the glitter onto your nail instead of applying coats and coats and coats of it. Because usually what happens is that the clear coat gets on your nail, but the glitter doesn't. So this way you get a nice gradient and you don't have to paint and paint and paint. And then I just do this to blend everything together. What you don't want to do is take an opaque glitter like this and apply it to a sponge because glitters like this don't have much of a base to them. They're really just packed with glitter and if you apply this onto a sponge and then onto your nail, you're going to get a very, very thick, clumpy application of glitter. So, oh hi Kylie, I missed you. So my final hack is when you have maybe not gone to the salon in a while or you see a significant amount of growth in your nails but you just don't have time to get a manicure, just take a nail art brush and the color that you already had on and just go ahead and paint it on as you see me doing right here. And you wanna make sure that you get a little bit onto the previous polish but not a lot. Make sure you get as many coats as you had on top. I had two, so I applied two coats here. And then I took my brush and kind of blended the two together just a little bit. And once that was dry, I just painted a whole other coat right on top of both of those. And I made sure to wrap the tip because by now you've probably had some tip wear and wrapping the tip is going to seal all of this together and make your manicure last even longer. And then I applied a top coat so that there were no streaky lines visible. And there you go. The before and after is such a difference. You even have a clear, brighter color because by now the previous color has probably been dulled out a little bit. And a bonus hack, which has nothing to do with nails, but is a really good use for your acetone. If you get sticker residue, like when you peel off a sticker off of a frame like this, all you need to do is put some acetone on a cotton ball and just wipe it right off. I do this on my windshield too, like if I have a parking pass or something that I wanted to take off. This works so well. You just want to make sure that you don't get it on the wood because acetone is not wood friendly. So just keep it on the glass. So that was it for this video. I really hope that you guys liked these nail hacks. Let me know which of these you haven't tried before, which of these you really liked. And if you have heard of all of these, I am sorry you wasted your time. 
I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!